There are many different digital voice modes available to amateur radio operators today. But which one is best? Well, that depends on what your definition of best is. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the digital voice modes available to amateur radio operators. I'm going to touch on a few of them. A few of the others I'll put links in the show notes too so that you can explore them. There are some new modes like M17, another kind of fun one to play with. It's inexpensive to get in with. Use on HF. It's free DV. So if you'd like to expand your horizons, this video is for you. There are a number of different digital voice modes available to amateur radio operators today. Some of them are P25, NXDN, DMR, D-Star, Yaesu System Fusion, also known as C4FM, as well as some relatively new modes like M17 as well as FreeDV. There are a number of different videos already online that talk about the technical specifications of each one of these modes, but that's not what I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to have kind of an unstructured video that basically talked about my experiences and opinions on these modes, and yes, they're my opinions, but I like all of the modes. They each have their own little quirks that you work around, but what's best for you is gonna be the one that's gonna provide you the best communications experience, and it may not be the one that has the best technical specifications to it. It's gonna be the one where your friends are, where the nets that you wanna be on are at, as well as the repeaters maybe in your area that support these modes. So what I'm gonna to talk to you about today are my experiences with these modes, and I'll give you a general overview. P25 is the first mode I wanna talk about today. The police and the military primarily use it. Radios are made by Motorola, JVC, Kenwood, uh, Thales, Harris, EF Johnson. It's an older technology. It was developed in the 80s, but implemented in the 1990s. I like the voice quality with it. It's a good mode. I have some repeaters locally that I do use and monitor with on P25. The only issue I really have with P25 is the expensive cost of the radios. That keeps a lot of people out of it. Probably the reason that I only have a handful of folks that I hear on the repeaters every week utilizing it. There are dual mode repeaters that I have access to that utilize it that aren't connected to the internet. Maybe there's a half a dozen people I may hear and it could be weeks at a time before I even hear somebody using the mode. Although that's my experience with it, um, you might have different experiences depending upon the implementation in your area. And that's something that you always want to consider when you're thinking about getting into one of these digital modes. It doesn't seem like P25 is as popular, let's say, as DMR or maybe Yaesu System Fusion or D-Star. The next mode I'd like to talk to you about is NXDN, also known as the Next Generation Digital Narrowband. It's used by business, industry, transport, and public safety. Radios are made by ICOM and Kenwood. In fact, it's a collaboration between the two uh, that started in 2003. Voice quality is very good. There's a very good video also online uh, that NB9X Paul did at TechCon 2022. I'll put a link in the show notes for that. We have a very extensive network of repeaters here in West Central Florida that stretches down to Southwest Florida. In fact, this repeater system was instrumental in recovery efforts that were done with amateur radio operators in the Southwest Florida area for Hurricane Ian. Cost factor for the radio is not as bad as P25, a little bit harder to find, a little bit more expensive than you would think, but still uh, very affordable when it comes to trying this mode if it's very implemented in your area and it's something that you want to try. Uh, the next mode, DMR, digital mobile radio, probably the most popular mode used by hams today. More than likely, it's will probably be your entry path into digital because a lot of your friends will already be on it. They have equipment. The entry cost is the lowest, and that's probably why it's so popular in amateur radio. But it also has probably one of the highest learning curves. It's an open standard used by a lot of manufacturers or a number of different radio companies that are making radios for DMR, including Motorola, Anytone, Radiodity, a number of uh, manufacturers make these radios. It was developed in 2005. The voice quality to me is okay. Um, the issue that you're gonna run into a lot is going to be regarding the uh, audio. My opinion, it seems like you're constantly adjusting the audio level because of the different ways that people are getting into some of the talk groups. 
The volume control seems to be my biggest hang up with it, but every one of these modes has some kind of a quirk. One other little quirk that DMR has is a learning curve in getting the program code plugs. Instead of my maybe like DMR or D-Star where you just hit one button and you can control whichever talk group that you're on, you have to program different memory channels on these code plugs and they take a little bit of time to get used to and understand. In my opinion, code plugs are a very logical way of programming radios by keeping channels that you would program and frequencies in into their own respective zones so it's very uh, very organized way, almost like a file cabinet per se. The cost is, as I mentioned, is one of the lowest ones. But another thing that you have to deal with is unlike uh, Fusion or D-Star, where maybe a call sign and the name will pop up in the radio, you have to download the digital contact list into your radio if your radio supports it. If it does, you'll see the call sign, the name of the person, where they're located. But if it doesn't support it, all you're gonna see is their DMR ID, which is okay. It's not a super you know, deal buster with it but you can find yourself spending a lot more time with code plugs and the learning curve with DMR. Don't be afraid of it though. A lot of your friends probably use DMR. Give it a try. If you have questions, ask them. Very happy to help people out with DMR. I've done a number of different code plugs for different radios and manufacturers and share them up on a web page that I have as well as uh, some other places on Reddit and so on. So, if you do decide to get into DMR, it'll be a low cost entry method for it. Give yourself a little bit of time and in no time, I think you'll have it figured out. It'll enjoy it. It's a very fun mode, a lot of different talk groups, a lot of folks involved, a lot of different repeaters. In fact, in my area, DMR repeaters are more of. That's also gonna be an aspect uh, uh, that you're gonna look into in these digital modes. Uh, are there a lot of repeater support for it in your area rather than making you have to utilize a hotspot? So now let's talk about D-STAR. Uh, D-STAR stands for the Digital Technologies for Amateur Radio. It's one of the first modes developed and used in amateur radio. The last one that I tried, but actually has become my favorite for a number of different reasons. One, I'm not spending a lot of time programming the radio. Uh, works great when I'm traveling. ICOM is a primary manufacturer for it. They've implemented this mode in a lot of their newer radios. Although it's an open standard, it does use a proprietary vocoder, and you'll hear people want to be negative about that, but the ease of use is a factor, as well as uh, for when I'm traveling. You see, on DMR, um, repeater owners will make up their minds as to which uh, talk groups that they have available on their repeaters. So perhaps maybe when I'm traveling, I may be in a city that I get onto a DMR repeater for, and it might not have the talk group that is on one of the repeaters down where I live that allows me to talk to people in my area that I came from. So on a recent trip to Detroit, for instance, on D-Star, I was able to take my HT, connect up to a repeater there, and connect it to the gateway down here in Bartow, Florida, where I was able to communicate with some of my fellow hams that were here. Uh, and when I was driving, I was using a hotspot and was able to still make that connection to the repeater as well as uh, talking on reflectors along the way. It was a, made it an enjoyable trip. So D-Star, in my opinion, especially in the programming side, I only need one frequency programmed and I can tell the repeater what to connect to as opposed to changing memory channels on a number of different zones that you might have set up on a DMR radio. So it's very simplistic. There's no downloading digital contact lists where that's the only way you're gonna see the call sign and the name pop up on the screen. D-Star has that ability built right in, so once you have it programmed, you're set. And another big powerful thing that's implemented on the newer ICOM radios is the DR memory. DR memory is a very powerful tool that you download initially when you get the radio, uh, the databases online, and you can download that into the radio. It provides you the ability to hit a button and in, by GPS it will locate the closest repeaters to you, both analog and digital giving you the ability when you're traveling just not to have a lot of things already have to be pre-programmed before you leave. They're already in the radio. You hit a button by GPS, it will locate the closest D-Star repeater to you. Worked beautiful for me on my trip. So traveling wise, D-Star is my favorite. Voice quality, um, I've heard some hams and one was K0LWC in his video about uh, uh, digital voice and ham radio and the future of digital voice and ham radio. He said to avoid D-Star and that the audio quality was poor, but I find it even better than DMR. I'm not constantly adjusting the volume control like I am on DMR. 
and if you're using decent equipment and you're coming in the D-Star network fine, I find no issues with the voice quality. In fact, it worked very well on my trip. So my personal favorite may not be yours, but that's my opinion. I really like D-Star. There's a lot of very good qualities to it. So you might want to look at that as a possibility for maybe your first entry into the digital realm of voice and amateur radio. The last mode I'd like to talk about today is Yaesu System Fusion or C4FM. Well, you know, the last one I would talk about today is the easiest mode to use. You hit one button on the radio and you can go from FM to digital. Now, Yaesu gave a lot of these system uh, fusion repeaters out to repeater owners for almost little or no cost to clubs so that it would attract more people to use uh, their product. You know, you can get a Yaesu FT70DR handheld for as cheap as $160. And it works both analog, dual band, but it also, with one button, you can get into Yaesu System Fusion and use it in digital mode. And if the repeater that you're using also has the Wires X Enhancement, which is the wide area internet repeater enhancement system, that will give you access to talk groups all around the world. And the beautiful thing about it, as opposed to DMR and having to have code, uh, code plugs set up for it and, and talk groups programmed, you can easily control the repeater into which one of the wires x rooms that the repeater is selected to uh, right from the handheld it's very flexible very easy to use might be a mode if you have a lot of maybe yesu system fusion repeaters in your area to try i have a couple in my area none of the wires x internet connected ones but it's a really nice mode very inexpensive to get into and the very easiest mode to use in my opinion so after talking about a few of these modes which one's best well, that's going to be something that you're going to have to think about because it's going to be what's best for you. Um, you can do some more uh, research on the technologies and the voice quality and all those things that you want. But if your friends aren't there and there's none of the nets or any of the experiences that you're looking for in that mode, the technology aside, it may not be the best for you. So if you're just getting into digital voice, think about all of those factors before you purchase a radio. Also, talk to your friends in your ham radio clubs. They're great uh, ass assets to have, as, as well as mentors and Elmers with regards to digital modes, and I'm sure they'd be happy to help you. So reach out. There are a lot of resources available on the internet, but get out there. Don't be afraid of digital. It's not that difficult to do. Have a lot of fun in the hobby. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also, please like this channel and so that in the future you'll catch some of my other videos. Thanks a lot. 7-3.